Hey folks, today we're going to go over a budget for somebody who is going to be using dynamic banking with a credit card. Now you often hear me say that dynamic banking is not something magical. You're not going to get rich quick. You're not going to pay off your debts really fast in any type of magical way. We just use dynamic banking to offset interest charges that we might otherwise have, and we apply the full amount of our income towards paying down our debts. Now, in a lot of the examples that we have, you end up seeing debt paid down really quickly using dynamic banking. But that's because the cash flow is high enough that it can make a big difference when we divert it all towards paying down our debt. In today's situation, this person has a negative cash flow situation. That makes it very challenging. This person also does not have access to a line of credit where they can get big chunks in order to pay down high interest credit card debt and suddenly increase their cash flow. So what we're going to look at is we're going to go through their budget line by line, and we're going to find out where's their extra money, what can we get rid of, how can we increase this cash flow, and how can we offset the credit card interest that they're paying in order to maximize the use of their funds each month. Now, because they're in a negative cash flow situation, they're not in a position to throw a whole bunch of money towards knocking down debt, which means using dynamic banking, they're not going to be offsetting large amounts of interest charges. Unfortunately, this is the situation that a lot of people find themselves in. So I wanted to do this video because I know there's a lot of people out there that are in the same situation that are struggling, and you may not feel comfortable enough reaching out to somebody for help, but maybe you will be able to learn a thing or two to help you with your budget. So stay tuned and we'll get right into it. Oregon Cashflow Pro offers free money management advice to help you take control of your finances. And now here's your host, personal finance enthusiast and licensed insurance broker, James Barber. All right, let's take a look at what we have here. We've got the current budget. You can see the list of items in the budget. Total expenses are currently $810.93. Current income, $700.83, which leaves us with a cash flow of negative $27.93. Clearly, this is a problem. There isn't a whole lot that you can do when you're negative cash flow each month and your credit cards are maxed out. Now, unfortunately, this person didn't get a hold of me until after they had maxed out their credit cards and they were in trouble. But that's okay. We're going to do what we can to get them back on the right track. So, I've broken this down into what can be paid with a credit card and what can't be paid with a credit card. Okay, so we've got rent that can't be paid with a credit card. Your credit card payments you can't pay with a credit card. Personal loan and then another credit card and laundry. All of these things can't be paid with a credit card, but everything else on this list can be paid with a credit card. So we've got renter's insurance, internet, phone bill, cat expenses, and then we've got a whole bunch of subscription services. All of these can be paid with a credit card. Currently, that isn't what's happening. Some of them are getting paid with a credit card, but for the most part, this person is really struggling with trying to make all of their payments each month and have money to eat. So what can we do? What we want to look at is what's our total for everything that we have to pay with cash. So everything we have to pay with cash 
adds up to $609.10. Everything that we can pay with a credit card adds up to $201.83. Now our current minimum payment is $149 on the Chase credit card. This is the one that has 20% interest. We have one with 20% interest and one with 0% interest. We're gonna focus first on the one with 20% interest. That's the biggest balance. And it's also the biggest payment each month. So if we have a total payment of $149, of that, the amount that gets paid in interest is $84. And the amount the principal goes down is $65, okay? Immediately, what we can do, we want to get into a situation where we put all of our extra money towards that credit card each month. This person gets paid right at the beginning of the month with their income. So we're going to set aside all of the money for the bills that they can't use a credit card on. All of what they have to pay in cash ends up adding up to $609.10. But that includes the chase payment. So if we take out the chase payment, we're looking at $460.10 in cash that they have to pay each month. Subtract that $460.10 off of their income, and we end up with a possible payment to chase of $322.90. That's their whole budget, okay? Everything goes to pay these cash bills and the chase payment. That means we're gonna put an additional principal payment each month of $173.90. So the total principal pay down initially, when they make that $322.90 payment, is gonna be $238.98 that their balance goes down on their credit card, okay? Now, without making any other changes to their budget, they have $201.83 that they can pay with a credit card. Well, we just freed up $238.90 worth of principal. Can we pay $201.83 worth of bills with that credit card? Yeah, we can. So now we're in a situation where if we do that, the cash flow ends up being $37.07. So $37.07 is how much the credit card principal will get paid down each month if they make no other changes on their budget. Now, we do want to actually make some other changes on their budget, but before we do that, there is another way that we can kind of maximize the use of the funds that we've got. Now, this person has a second credit card that has 0% interest through September. They're currently paying $75 on this one. All of that ends up going to principal. That's the minimum payment, 75. All of it goes towards principal, which means $75 a month gets freed up on that credit card. Well, this person is trying not to spend any more money on their credit card. So in their current situation, they're not viewing this as a possibility of something that they wanna use. But what I wanna do as we pay $238 principal down on this card that has a 20% interest charge on it. Rather than paying all of these bills with the Chase credit card, what we want to do is we want to shift a couple of bill payments and pay them with this card. So what we're going to do is we're going to move, we're going to pay the internet and we're going to pay renter's insurance. Okay, so what we end up doing was switching this payment and this payment onto the Citibank card. You can see over here, total bills paid with this credit card is $72.88, which brings our total bills paid with this credit card to $128.95. And that increases our cash flow on this credit card each month now to $109. And 95 cents. Not a whole lot of savings difference as 
far as the interest goes. What this will end up saving us on interest in the first month is going to be about $1.83. Let's say interest saved each month. And that's going to be, it'll actually be about a between a dollar eighty three and four dollars. So what we end up saving is actually a dollar eighty three to four dollars, somewhere in that range. And the reason that it's a range is because when you get charged interest on credit cards, it's based on the average daily balance. Because we put this big additional principal payment down, your average daily balance goes down by that much at the beginning of the month. And it slowly creeps up as you start paying those bills with your credit card. So ideally, you wait as long as you can throughout the month to pay those bills with your credit card. This will get you the most amount of interest saved with the dynamic banking method. We're offsetting that interest charges, okay? So we don't know exactly how much the savings are going to be, but it's going to be within these ranges. It'll be $1.83 saved if the only thing that we have is this $110, $110 cash flow that we pay down each month. Okay. But we know it's going to be more than that. It'll be up closer to $4 if we have this additional principal pay down the whole month except for the last day of the month. We know that's not going to happen because those bills end up coming due some point during the month. So odds are it'll be somewhere in between here. Okay. Now that's just the first month. These savings add up. Okay. These savings add up over time. So it it's not a whole lot, but it can make a difference over time. Especially when you're working on a really tight budget like this. So. Like I said, this doesn't do anything magic, okay? The success from doing this method is consistency. Over and over and over, you're going to save a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. Now, this is their budget as it sits without making any type of changes. Clearly, we can do better than this. The discussion we had was what can we do to make this bu budget a lot more efficient. What can we cut out of it that you don't really need? Now, when I'm working with somebody, it's not about austerity. It's not about getting rid of every single little thing that you have or everything that you do and you have to live like a pauper. That's not the goal here. What happens if we get rid of every single bit of entertainment, because it may be considered frivolous to some people. The problem with that is, is people get bored out of their minds. They end up being tempted with other things. So when I took a look at this budget, what jumped out to me was Amazon. This person does not have any extra income to be buying anything on Amazon, so they don't need to be paying for their Amazon Prime. That's what this cost is here. This is the Amazon Prime. So we want to get rid of that. Okay. We've got a Disney Plus membership. We want to get rid of that. There's no reason to be paying for a Disney Plus membership if you're not using it constantly. You can get access to all kinds of things to watch on YouTube and other, other places where it's free to where you don't have to pay a subscription membership to. The problem with these subscription memberships is that they just add up. Little by little, they add up, and you don't even realize that you've got all this money leaking out of your budget. So it's best if there's something on the Disney Plus channel that you want to watch, get it, watch what you want, and then get rid of it. Don't just leave it in there, and you're paying for it month after month if you're not using it. Now, if you are using it, if it, if it saves you from going out and spending money at the actual movie theater, which is way more expensive, if it saves you from going down to Redbox and renting every few days, this is a personal decision that you're going to have to make. It might be worth it to keep it. In this case, this person does not use it that much. 
and they're okay getting rid of it. Um, Aqualife. This is an online game, and this is the cost for the premium membership. They spend a lot of time on this, and it's actually a good distraction for them. It keeps them from um, being tempted to go out and spend money somewhere else. So we made the decision that this is a good one to keep. Six bucks, if it can keep you entertained throughout the month, great. That is actually a not very expensive way to keep yourself entertained. But as soon as it doesn't do the job, get rid of it, okay? If you're tempted to spend more money on that game, don't do it. We're going to want to get rid of it if that's the case. But if all you're spending is $5.99 a month on this game, okay, we can live with that. Um, this one, not exactly sure what this one is, but they're getting rid of it. Was not necessary. Uh, it was just a subscription for something that they could get free somewhere else. Apple. This had to do with storage. Now, everything that they have is on their phone. Videos, notes, files, whatever. Um, but you don't need to pay 20 bucks a month to Apple to back up your phone. You can do that with Google Docs. You can do it with Dropbox. You can actually save every single thing that's on your phone somewhere else without having to pay that extra 20 bucks a month to Apple. So we're getting rid of that one. Apple Music. No need to pay Apple Music to have your playlist. You're talking at $15.99 a month, you're talking almost 200 bucks a year that you're paying just to have a playlist. Uh, there's other places that you can get this for free and you might have to listen to a few commercials, but with the budget as tight as, tight as it is, and when the situation we're at with our credit card balances, we need to cut down with whatever we can. So if there's a free service that can do the job, we want to use that free service. Get rid of this. YouTube Premium, same thing. You can use an app like Musi, M-U-S-I. Does almost the same thing uh, as the Premium. It allows you to listen to all the YouTube videos while you're doing something else on your phone. Um, look into those other options. There's no need to be paying $15.99, almost $200 a year just for that, okay? Um, that's about it as far as the bills that we can cut down right away. So let's see how that affects our budget. Okay, check this out. New budget. We've got rent, our credit card payments, wards, laundry, phone, cat, and Aqualife. Now, the bills that we get pay with a credit card, we've still got the 7288 that goes on our 0% card. We're down to $63.93 on what we pay on the Chase credit card each month, which means we're going to be paying down our principal by almost $175 a month now. That is a huge, huge difference, and the impact on this person's life is going to be pretty minimal when the only thing they have to do is change uh, to using a few different types of programs rather than paying for these subscriptions that they've been paying for. And our new amount saved, interest saved each month, is now up to between $2.91 a month and $4. So that's kind of a big difference the higher we get those guaranteed savings each month up, the better off we're going to be in the long run, okay? Because each month, those will get more and more. Yeah, so what we end up seeing is this $2.91, that's every single month. It will decrease the amount of interest that you're paying by $2.91. So $2.91 in the first month. In the second month, now you're saving $5.82 in interest. By month three, we're at $8.73 in interest you're saved each month. By month four, 
$11.64 each month. You can see how these add up. These are minimum amounts, okay? But remember, this is because each month, this card ends up getting paid down by about $174 a month. This is a huge difference from where we were at at the very beginning, which was negative cash flow of $27.93. Okay, this person was in big trouble on their budget. And the big part of it was all these subscription services that they kept subscribing to and thinking that they needed that thing in their life because the price of convenience. But the price of convenience gets really, really expensive if you let it get out of control. So hopefully this is a lesson learned. All of you should go check your budgets, check your credit cards, find out where you're just letting all this money leak every single month because uh, it can really add up. It makes a big difference. So by the time we get to September, things are going to change a little bit. Um, September is nine months. So by month nine, By month nine, we're at $26 less each month in interest. Now, what happens in what happens in nine months? Well, that's when our 0% card stops being 0%. Now we're going to have to deal with less principal pay down each month on this card. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to see which card now has the lowest interest rate. We may end up switching cards on which one we make that bulk payment to, but it all depends on where our savings are at. But what we do know is that within nine months, we're going to be paying $26 less per month in interest, at least on this one card that's maxed out. That card will no longer be maxed out. They're going to be, there's going to be plenty of room available on it in case of an emergency. That's the beauty of the dynamic banking right? We're throwing all of our money at something, but we got to have access to it if we need it. So there is going to be access to this, but hopefully this person will not need it and they will continue to pay down their bills and hopefully be on track for getting out of debt within just a couple of years. That's it for today's video. I hope you learned something that can help you with your budget. If you're interested in seeing something like this set up for your budget, I can help you out. I can do something similar. Check the link below in the show notes, and I'd be glad to do one up for you to help you out with your budget. And you're always welcome to give me a call. Go to the Calendly link in the show notes. Uh, you can sign up. You can see what hours I'm available, and we can have a 20-minute phone call. There's no cost to any of this. I'm just here to help you out. So if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. You can always put questions in the comment section below. I do monitor those daily and I do respond to those. So I look forward to hearing from you and you all have a great holiday. We'll see you in the new year.